They've set out a first of May Day call to Jimmy Key. He has eight wins in his last nine starts. Nolan Ryan's on the mound for Texas, and he rewrites the record book every game he plays. CTV Sports presents LaBette's Blue Jays Baseball. From Arlington Stadium in Texas, it's game two of this mini-series between the Toronto Blue Jays and the Texas Rangers. Hello everybody, I'm Fergie Oliver, and are you in for a treat tonight? A pitching matchup that features the ageless wonder, Nolan Ryan, who can still throw in the mid-90s with his fastball against the finesse of a Jimmy Key, who from 60 feet 6 inches can still thread a needle with the best of them. So it's power against finesse tonight. Now, here's Don Chevrier and Tommy Hutton. Fergie, the Blue Jays begin May having gone 12 and 9 in April. That's the same as April of 1990, 14 and 14 last year in May. I think the team can do better than that this time. Well, I think so, uh, Chevy. And what I saw in the month of April, I saw a couple of surprises. In the starting lineup, Mark Witten, the way he's been hitting the ball with his 14 RBIs, and Devon White. A lot of people weren't sure what Devon White would do in that leadoff spot, and he has done it all. How about the pitchers? Mike Timlin, he's done the job in the bullpen. Dwayne Ward, I don't know if you could call it a surprise, but certainly a big Plus. Jay is getting their first test against the West of the Texas series on to Kansas City after this tonight. Ryan and the Rangers are set to go on CTV. We performed the national anthems in all 26 major league ballparks last year. Tonight, Helen will be performing both the Canadian and national anthems. No Canada never did Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watch, were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket red glare, the bomb bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our was still there. Oh, say does that dark bangle that I get way or the land of the free and the It's a gorgeous night here in Arlington, Texas, situated about midway between Dallas and Fort Worth, 79 degrees Fahrenheit, low humidity and a nice pleasant breeze blowing. Tommy, you know to enjoy it in the spring. We come back in July. You can add about 25 degrees to this temperature here. It's nice to look up at that scoreboard, the uh, digital degree marking of 79 right now, because you and I both well know that back in July when we come back home, and there you see it, it'll be a, a triple digits when you look up at the scoreboard. But this is a, a fun atmosphere. I've always enjoyed coming to Arlington Stadium. It's a nice ballpark. It's a good field to play on. Most of the infielders and outfielders enjoy this 
infield and the outfield. The grass is very uh, cut uh, short, and it's also very fast, almost like AstroTurf. And speaking of fast, uh, here comes 44-year-old Nolan Ryan, who still can throw in the 90s. And a rousing ovation from his Texas fans as he takes them out against the Toronto Blue Jays. And this, the little ballpark that grew, it was a high school stadium, kept getting bigger and bigger as the Rangers' relationship with the American League progressed. But the story, of course, is Ryan, one of the rarities in all of professional sport and uh, one of the great mistakes in scouting because when he was signed by the New York Mets, he was a 10th round draft choice back in 1965. So a lot of people didn't really know what Nolan Ryan was going to be all about. He was then dealt to California for Jim Fregosian, one of the worst trades of all time, December of 71. Fregosi now, the Phillies manager. So the lineups for today's game are brought to you by the Game Genie, the video game enhancer by Camerica. Ryan has owned a lot of hitters. He absolutely possesses Devon White. Oh, one for 22 is White's record against him lifetime. Roberto Alomar hits next, then Kelly Gruber. And Joe Carter in left field. John Olerud at first base. The next two have never seen Nolan Ryan yet. Mark Whitten and Glenn Allen Hill DHing. The catcher is Greg Myers. And the shortstop, the switch hitter, Manuel Lee. And behind Nolan Ryan, the defense for the Texas Rangers. Jack Doherty in left field. Gary Pettis, five-time gold glove winner in center. Ruben Sierra in right. Steve Bouchel, Jeff Houston on the left side of the infield. Julio Franco plays second base. Rafael Palmero. At first, Mike Stanley will catch, and 44-year-old right-hander Nolan Ryan, last time out for Nolan Ryan in eight and a third innings against the Cleveland Indians. He threw over 130 pitches. There was some question as to whether he would take his turn tonight, but they decided after seeing him throw on the side between starts that he was ready, and he certainly is, and so are we. Ready to go against White. Devon, equally adept from either side of the plate, hitting 333, having a fantastic season. 13 runs batted in. Tries to butt his way on, but it's foul. Well, you're, you're Devon White, and you might not know the exact figures that you quoted, one for 22 against Nolan Ryan, but you know you haven't hit him over the years, so he tries to reach base by dropping down a bunt, trying to drag one. One thing he does remember is, I'm sure, that the last hit was quite a while ago. He's old for the last 17. <laughs> so it wasn't just yesterday he got the hit off Ryan. He throws it past him for strike two, one and two. Ryan in his 25th Major League season is third on the all-time list. Only Deacon McGuire and Tommy John, who saw action in 26, have longer service down an in ball two. And the other day, he said he's going to continue in the foreseeable future. There are the strikeouts. Number 5,000 came right here against Ricky Henderson, who made history of his own today, as you saw earlier. And to think there was a time Steve Carlton was ahead of Nolan Ryan. Didn't get the call there. The fans thought he should have. Tim Sheeta's calling balls and strikes. The count is full. So did Nolan. That's about the most upset he gets. You saw the facial expression. He wanted that call, but he's uh, such a professional. He's in no way going to show up the home plate umpire at this point. Up high, and he strikes him out. Let's go to Fergie Armano, the Ranger pitching coach. You look back at Nolan Ryan's record, 15 and four with five days rest or more. Are you going to change what you do with Nolan Ryan and when you pitch him? Yeah, this has been a, a, a tough selling job to Nolan. He, uh, he fights going with an extra day's rest, but his body has shown by his record and by his stuff to do better when he has what we call an active rest day. And I think he's finally come to accept that. And wherever we can, we'll give the guy an extra day. Pitching here to Roberto Alomar with an 0-1 count. A little 
soft roller to second base. Franco throws him out. So quickly, two gone, and Kelly Gruber will try his hand next to Jay's third baseman. Good crowd here at Arlington, and I'll tell you, Chevy, one thing we should look for tonight in Nolan Ryan, early in the air, he pitched a couple of ball games where it was very cold, and the middle finger of his pitching hand, right at the tip, kind of cracked a little bit. You know how the skin gets when you get too cold? Uh -huh. And he's had trouble with that. And maybe hasn't thrown quite as many change-ups because he uses that finger to put a little extra pressure on his change-up. So maybe more fastballs and curveballs, he might stay away from that change-up. Mr. Gann, it's ball 2-2-0. Two, two and oh. The Jays, by losing 8-5 last night, Boston beating Minnesota, fall out of first place. They're half a game back starting play this evening. They face the West for the first time. The first month exclusively against Eastern Division teams until yesterday. Inside. Ryan, a long look back to Sheeta on that one, too. That's a pitch he's not liable to get from this umpire, it appears. Well, so far, and again, we talk about umpire's consistencies. So far, he's missed twice with it. He hasn't gotten the call. Cooper fouls it back on the 3-0. This is a good test, I think, Chevy, for the Blue Jays. They're on a stretch now, starting yesterday, 30 games against Western Division ball clubs. Uh, last year, they were 44 and 40 against the West, and they're going to be tested here through the month of May. Strike two, breaking ball for them. That was that pitch that every once in a while people question with Nolan Ryan. That wasn't the, the straight fastball. That was the fastball that he gets some sink to. And you could see the bottom fall out of it. And what I mean by question, there were some hitters at times that thought maybe Nolan Ryan was cutting the baseball a little bit. He walks Gruber up and in. I wouldn't think a pitcher with his talents would have to even consider cutting a baseball. That time, the fastball just gets away from him, and somehow Kelly's able to back away. Because you're not looking for a pitch at all up in that area with three balls on you. Joe Carter up next. He sailed Hitler's last night for just the fourth game this season. He said safely in 10 of the last 12. down and away. Kelly stumbles, gets caught, and they've got him in a rundown. The ball is dropped and he's safe. A bizarre episode between first and second base. First, Kelly makes the mistake. Then the Rangers, Palmero can't hang on to it, and he's safe after all that. Well, Kelly saw the ball get by Mike Stanley, the Rangers catcher, and started to go, and then realized that it didn't get by far enough, and then got caught in that twilight zone. So Palmero does the correct thing. The mistake here is that Franco gets the ball to Palmero too late. And he really never had a chance to make the catch cleanly while he put the tag on Kelly Gruber. And that's why he dropped the ball. Yeah, he was preoccupied with getting to the man and forgot about the baseball. So Kelly gets away with something and keeps the inning alive for Carter and a 1-0 count to him. Pops him straight up. Of the bag at second. Julio Franco makes the call and records the out. So much ado about nothing, and Ryan gets the job done for the Rangers. They're coming to bat in a moment on the bats. Blue Jays baseball. Texas lineup is brought to you by the Game Genie, the video game enhancer by Camera Guy. And it features Gary Pettis in center field, Jack Doherty in left, Rafael Palmero, the ex Chicago Cup at first base, Blue Jay Killer, Ruben Sierra with two home runs last night, bats cleanup, Julio Franco at second, the aging is Juan and Gonzalez, Mike Stanley catches tonight, Steve Bouchel's at third base, the shortstop is Jeff Houston against Jimmy Key, looking for his fifth consecutive victory. Here's a look at the Blue Jays' defense in the outfield from left to right. Joe Carter, Devon White, and Mark Witten. 
Kelly Gruber, Manuel Lee, Roberto Alomar, John Olerud around the infield. Greg Myers will catch Jimmy Key on the mound. Blue Jays pitching coach, Galen Sisko. Jimmy Key is 4-0. Why has he been so successful? Well, Jimmy's uh, put his A game on the field, and when he does that, he gets his breaking ball over almost at will, and uh, specifically when he's behind hitters, his changeup has just been excellent, and he's spotting his fastball in and out excellently, and uh, that's why he's 4-0. He works to Gary Pettis, and it's ball one. He's looking to equal what Jerry Garvin did. Remember Jerry Garvin, the first-year Blue Jay, won his first five, five and zero in the first season of 1977. He looks to match that tonight. That pitch is low. He falls behind his hitter. Two balls and no strikes. Three and two lifetime is Key's record against the Rangers. And to coin the phrase used by Galen Sisko, Jimmy Key will need that A game out there against Nolan Ryan. Strike one. Pettis batting about 50 points higher than many figure he will throughout the year at 289. Still known much more for his range and his glove than his bat. That's why he's bounced around from the Angels to the Tigers to free agency now to Texas. Two and two. Devon White played behind Pettis coming up with the California Angels. You know, I thought we might see Brian Downing in the leadoff spot. Downing not in the lineup tonight. He's been the designated hitter for the Rangers over the last few weeks. But Juan Gonzalez, the youngster, is the DH tonight. Gonzalez with a slightly sore hamstring. So it was a choice, Downing or Gonzalez. And Downing is the one that has to sit tonight, but he's available for pinch hitting because he's healthy. The appeal at first base is denied by the umpire there, Drew Koval. Well, here's a quote by Downing. He's supposed to be too hurt, too old to play this game. And he saw George Foreman fight, <laughs> like a lot of other people. He's back at it. He had a great bat over the years with the Angels. Line to Gruber. Very fine catch by the Blue Jays' third baseman to take care of Pettis. One thing about Gary Pettis, he always has had a little more pop as a right-handed hitter. Jack Doherty. And that time he hits the ball hard. The problem with Pettis, see that uppercut swing? When you have the speed of a Gary Pettis, you should swing down on the ball and utilize the speed. That's why every year he strikes out over 100 times and only hits two or three home runs. Tommy, as you saw Kelly Gruber, and of course you saw him fall between first and second, he is suffering with a bad case of flu tonight. He was in on the trainer's table for a couple of hours. Uh, he's taking all kinds of pills, and uh, he's lucky to be out there, really. But I tell you, it's going around, too. Everybody, it seems like, on the club, and it's uh, like in a preschool. Uh, one, one little kid gets it and everybody gets it. And that's what happens with the ball club because you travel together all the time. Now you tell me this after you spent an hour in the clubhouse. <laughs> I feel fine, though. <laughs> so do I so far. <laughs> oh, and two is the count to Jack Doherty. He is one of the reasons that they gave up on Pete and Cavillia. The other was that Bobby Valentine just plain couldn't stand him. And Cavillia now with the Tigers. It's low, one ball and two strikes. You say the age of the 400 hitter is gone. Well, Doherty did that. But it was back in 1984 with Helena of the Pioneer League at 402, just 118 here this year. Swings at a bad pitch, holding at a ball and two strikes. Yeah, it's really been a, a strange career for Jack Doherty. He was a, a very successful collegiate player, University of Arizona, yet he wasn't drafted by any club so he played in the minor leagues he played with that Helena ball club which was uh, an independent team made up of kids from all all different organizations how to play and if you look at his minor league record after that season he went on to West Palm Beach with the Expos hit 316 hit 317 at Jacksonville hit 312 in Indianapolis never got an opportunity with a major league club and here he is finally getting a chance with the Texas Rangers and he's 30 years of age. It's that hard. Gruber tested again. Up with it smartly, and the throw is there. Two fine plays by Gruber. Two outs, and Rafael Palmero is next. Rafael Palmero, you hit left-handers better last year than you did right-handers. John Olerud did the same. Why do you think that is? Well, because uh, I concentrate a little bit more. I tried to... Uh, uh, see the ball and, and you know try to work the whole field, hit the ball the other way. 
uh, against right handers sometimes I pull off the ball and it caused me to hit ground balls. I think John Alaru does the same thing. If you ask him, he'll go with the pitch and, and he stays in there a little bit better against uh, left handers. Big 318 this year. Decent start certainly for Raphael. That is ball one high, but he's still a better road hitter. The only American leaguer to get 100 hits away last year than he is here in Arlington. About uh, 60 points better away than at home. Hey, the bottom line is this guy just has a sweet swing. Doesn't matter lefties or righties. 2-0 and is the count to him. I think a, a good trivia question for 1990. Who led the league in hits? Rafael Palmero. 191. Key 3 0 to it. He also finished third in overall batting average at 319. There's a strike to him, 3 1. He was born in Havana, Cuba, September 24th, of 1964. in center field. Talking back is White. He has room. Makes the catch for the third out. So a long loud third out from the bat of Palmero and the Rangers are gone on the Bats Blue Jays baseball. Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on CTV brought to you by Labatt's Blue, the green true taste of Canada. Here's young John Olero to face Nolan Ryan. He's done decently against him, this young hitter. Two for six lifetime versus the Ranger right-hander. John's a pretty good road hitter overall, hitting 310 away from home. Whitman and Hill get a taste of Ryan next at the knees. That's strike one. One and one to young John. that pitch last inning he didn't get of course it was a fastball a couple of fastballs out there he, he didn't get that time Nolan Ryan with the good curveball questionable but he got the call on the outside part of the plate Jim Sheeta just paid him back still owes him on the way I figured that's a strike oh it looks at it strike three let's go to Fergie Tom House, it's interesting about Nolan Ryan. He could go one inning out there or he could go nine, but his routine never changes. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, you know, I've always seen him do more, but I've never seen him do less. And sometimes, you you know, you wonder the day after whether he's thrown a no-hitter or whether he's given up seven runs in the first inning. Uh, it's the same, and I think it's a real credit to his commitment to the game. Mark Witt looks at his first Ryan pitch, a fastball over the heart of the plate for strike one. I tell you what else that does, Nolan Ryan and his uh, regime, his exercise routine that he goes into, it's it's helpful to the young pitchers. The Texas Rangers have Bobby Witt, Kevin Brown, guys like this see that. Oh, you see the look there from Ryan. He wanted that pitch, too. He didn't get from Tinchita. You see the grimace. Every time he kind of grits his teeth, that's when he wants that pitch. There was a changeup that we talked about that he might not throw a lot tonight, but that was a good one. Now, this is a good one. Mark Whitten, the guy next to him, Glenn Allen Hill, they're going to be major league stars for years the way they're starting out. Unusual to see both in the lineup tonight. Hills there's the DH. He lays off that. It's two and two. Oh, Mark with a great ball game last night, had four RBIs, big double. You see him with his 14 RBIs in 33 games he played with the Jays last year. Mark had seven RBIs. And you get the game before this last night, the one we did on Sunday, and this guy goes four for four up at the sky, though. He gets the call there. Back-to-back strikeouts, two gone here in the second. This was the day that Lou Gehrig took himself out of the Yankee lineup and never did return. May 1st, 1939. Well, everyone knows that Lou Gehrig replaced Wally Pipp, who played first base that day for the New York Yankees. Babe Dahlgren. Huh? Another Babe, but it was Babe Dahlgren. And then forgotten that if you look at Hill of the plate with a one strike count 
that later on after he could not play baseball anymore, he worked for the city of New York in a civic capacity under the guidance of the mayor, Lou Gehrig did. Oh, two. See, that's how pitches set up another pitch. You got Mark Witt with a couple of good curveballs. He started Glenn Allen with the curveball. And so he's been watching a lot of curves. And then what does he do? He throws that fastball by him on the second strike. Just gets a piece of this. Hill's got a very quick bat. He'll need one against Ryan. So people forget. They think of Nolan Ryan in the express, the 90 mile an hour fastball. But he gets a lot of strikeouts with that curveball. He gets a lot of strikeouts, period. <laughs> oh, weights are the secret to Ryan's success at age 44. He didn't start using them the other day. Back in the early 70s, he began a weight program when he'd be, what, in his mid-20s, I guess. And it's paid off for him now. He said he lifts a total of 80,000 pounds a week. Hour, by the way. Yeah, he does. He does a lot of uh, abdominal work. He does a lot of leg work uh, just to keep those areas strong because all of that uh, goes into the pitching. There it is. It's that curve. Frozen. Absolutely frozen right there. He strikes out the side. Four K's on the night for Ryan as the Rangers go to their half of the second inning. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball from Texas. Texas Rangers, Ruben Sierra, the right fielder batting cleanup, starts the second inning of a scoreless game. The pitcher's duel is on, as advertised. Strike one from Jimmy Key to Sierra. Franco and Gonzalez will hit next. Ruben got rolling early last night. His first of two homers came in the first inning. Texas won that one 8-5 to five to begin this mini two-game series. Okay, nothing new for Ruben Sierra either. Last year he had 373 against the Jays. And this is a, a young man you look at 25 years of age. He already has 118 lifetime home runs in the major leagues. Down low. His second last night was the game clincher up Jim Acker, a three run shot. Who was the last hitter before last night to hit two home runs against the Jays in one game? you with that for a moment. Sierra is only one away from Larry Parrish's all-time club record for career homers in this ballpark as a Texas Ranger. He has 72. Parrish for 73. Oh, fooled completely by that pitch. That's the finesse of a Jimmy Key that Fergie alluded to at the outset of our telecast. One out here in the second. Uh, for the real purists, this is fun tonight. Watching Jimmy Key paint and Nolan Ryan fire, but You've seen Nolan get some strikeouts with the curveball, and you heard Galen Sisko talking about Jimmy Key and the ability to get all the pitches over for strikes at any time of the count. And that was a good curveball there. He kept it down, and he had Sierra fooled. It's been a slow start to the year for the next hitter, Julio Franco. But he's hit 333 in the last eight games to up his average from 147 to 239, getting back to where he should be, the former Cleveland infielder. Strike one to him. Key base hit last night on Texas win. Every once in a while you see youngsters try to imitate Julio Franco with that stance. I wouldn't suggest it, but it certainly has worked for Julio Franco. I can't imagine a coach ever advising a youngster to stand that way at the plate. No, four out of the last five years, this stance has hit over 300. But watch, even though he starts that way, watch him bring his hands back and get them ready in the hitting. Right there. Yep. That is his way to get himself going. That's the way he feels comfortable. He's also been very comfortable against Jimmy Key over the years. If he's tough on the high fastball. He'll hit it where it's pitched. That's down low and he drives it foul. Last year he batted quite a 
bet on the number two spot. It cost him a lot of RBIs. From 92 down to 69. It's two and two. Think about Franco too. He has the power to all fields. He can hit the ball out to right field, and, and that's attested uh, to the fact that he has some fans in the right field bleachers with a nice sign out there. Said Julio's Dreamers, so they know he can hit the ball out that way too. <laughs> well, his first two homer game was the night of Nolan Ryan's six no hitter. Here's Lee with a test, and he's up, dropped the ball. He had it there in time, but it popped out of Olerud's mitt. front of that pitch a little bit. Nice play by Manuel Lee to get over and get in front of the ball. Slips just a little as he plants and the throw is low but it's the short hop type throw that should be picked by a first baseman. It's been a struggle for John Olerud working on his footwork, working on getting to the bag even though that's to the back end. That's a short hop that should be picked more often than not by a first baseman. Having been one for so many years, we'll accept your theory on that. That error gives the Rangers their first base runner of the night for the DH young one, Gonzalez, from Puerto Rico. He takes it low for ball one. In just 128 games last year, look what he's done this year already. But last year, in 128 games, over 100 runs driven in and 28 home runs. He has a mighty back. Ball one strike to it. Well, when you think about it, an outfield that can put together a couple of youngsters, mentioned Ruben Sierra, 25, Gonzalez just 21 years of age, and they they think the world of Juan Gonzalez. So they were a little, a little hurt in spring training. Mid-March he had knee surgery on his right knee, but he came back quickly. Let's get back to that question about the last to victimize the Jays for two home runs. Well, we know it was last Before year. Or last night. It wasn't this year. Joe Carter, thank goodness he will not do that to them anymore. September of 89 with the Cleveland Indians. Nobody hit two last year, huh? Well, somebody hit more last year. Cecil Fielder that's right, hit Cecil three, three yeah. in one game. <laughs> but if you want to be correct, two, that's what it was. The question was two. All right. We... You just read them the way they're printed. That's right. One ball, two strikes. Gonzalez count with Franco at first. One out. Rangers trying to get Nolan Ryan a lead. Gonzalez hits that pretty well. Mark Britton's going back. He'll take it off the wall. The great arm, though, will hold the runner at third base. Franco had no thoughts of coming home. This shows you what this 21-year-old can do. Out over the plate, he just goes with it. Nice little bit of decoy by Mark Witten. Kind of held his hands up as if he might make a catch. See, so he put his hand up right there. And I don't know if that froze Franco or not, but Franco could only make it to third because he also knew the strong arm of Mark Witten, and Mark got it into the cutoff man perfectly. See him hold that hand up right there? Either saying that it might be out for a home run, so Franco might slow That's up a little bit. That's what I thought he was doing, yeah. Putting up, saying, well, ah, this ball's out of here. It's a home run. So if Franco sees that, he might just shorten up a step or two. Hey, it might have worked. Well, the catcher, Mike Stanley, is up, starting his fifth game. Stanley comes in, hitting 214. And takes strike one. Tunes here with former Blue Jay Gino Petrale. Pitch just missed outside. One ball, one strike. Yeah, and because of that situation, he hasn't seen a lot of action because the Texas Rangers have seen mostly right-handed pitchers. Too many left-handers have uh, gone up against Bobby Valentine's crew.
this is inside. Yeah, he hit 104 points higher against left-handed pitching than right-handed pitching. He hasn't got much pop to his bat, just 11 extra base hits last year. But he, too, can go the other way. I've seen him hit some balls hard to the right center field gap. Down low, three and one. Key a pitch away from loading the bases for third baseman Steve Bouchelle. Jimmy does have his work cut out for him tonight. Last year, he was 8-2 and two against Eastern Division clubs, 5-5 five and five against the West. And in eight ball games here in Arlington over his career, he's only two with a handful of no decisions. So he's never won a ball game here in Texas. That is ball four to load the bases for Michelle. Remind you, a cash donation will be made to the Schizophrenia Society of Canon on behalf of the Labatt's Blue Player of the Game for Toronto and Canon. Makers of the Canon E08 camcorder, innovatively designed, lightweight and compact. The Canon E0 is packed with features too numerous to mention. With Canon, good things do come in small packages. So over at third base is Franco on the air by Oru that started all this. The double by Gonzalez has him at second of the walk to Stanley. Leaves him at first for Steve Bouchel. Bouchel trying to extend a hit streak to five games. Takes strike one. He likes this ballpark. He hits 375 here at present. Bouchelle is one of those players who just kind of quietly goes about his job. He's been pretty steady. An injury, a broken wrist, kept him out of action for a few games last year. But up until that point, he'd averaged about 150 games a year. Not very deep. Coming on from left field is Joe Carter. Franco will stop right there. No chance to score from that range, from that arm. Two gone now. Joe looking back saying it's a little tough right now, all that twilight. This is a tough time of the evening to get those balls popped high in the air. And anytime you have a long way to go, long strides, you want to stay on the balls of your feet and kind of tippy toe. If you start lumbering in and running on your heels, you start bouncing around too much. As soon as you do that, the head starts bobbing, and then you have a chance to drop the ball. Well, the next hitter, the shortstop, Jeff Houston, doesn't see a lot of action against left-handers. Only seven games against left-handed pitching last year. Very little power. But the Rangers would settle for a Houston single right here. Getting with the bases loaded. And two out in the Rangers' second of a scoreless game. Strike one. Jim Sheeta gives that the key, and the fans murmur their disapproval. rather inconsistent strike zone tonight. Even though that pitch was on the corner or outside, it was away from Houston and he was bailing as it was, not seeing a lot of left handers. He will take care of this himself. Olerud squeezes it and the Rangers leave the bases loaded. That was a good pitch. To get out from under. Three stranded, no score through two on the Bats Blue Jays baseball. Greg Myers, you're in the best shape you've ever been in. What did you do in spring training? Well, we got the new uh, conditioning coach, Rick Knox, and I, I worked out quite a bit with him. I, I, uh, every other day, I'd go to the health spa, health spa with him and uh, do a little bit of extra. Plus, Sully works us hard in spring, too. Greg Myers has seen the lion's share of work behind the plate. He's appeared in 15 to 21 games so far. But that kind of rotation has come up. The Jays have seen more right-handers against them than left. He's lost some weight. Looks to be uh, in the best shape, certainly, of his major league career. Now, the thing that Greg's going to have to continue, even though he's been catching a lot as the season progresses, you still have to do some working out. Playing alone isn't going to just keep you in shape and get, get you strong. On the first pitch in foul territory, Bouchelle has it. Ryan with a 
a perfect record except the walk to Gruber, third man he faced in the first inning. And looking at Greg Meyer, seeing the good shape that he is in, and one who can attest to that, Nolan Ryan, but another veteran catcher, Carlton Fisk, who works out a couple of times a week after ball games. The Rangers return the visit to Toronto. May 7th and 8th, Ryan, if the rotation holds, will likely pitch at the Sky Dome. He has never pitched at that facility. He'd like to add that to his list of Major League Parks. He has won at least one game in. This is high to Manuel Lee. He has two he could never get back. He's won in 30 of the 32 parks he has pitched in. That's a strike. He could never do it in Forbes Field, Pittsburgh, or Municipal Stadium in Kansas City. Skydome, he certainly can and probably will. Strike two. Did One you hear the grunt? Yes. And it's uh, it's funny, if you could only pick this up as a hitter, Nolan only grunts on the fastball. He throws the curveball, he doesn't grunt. Only on the fastball. And he's grunting now, I'll tell you. Strikeout number five for Ryan. Well, you see the fastball, then what does he do? There's that big curveball. It's hard to stay away from when you have two strikes. The CTV telecast is presented by authority of the Toronto Blue Jays Baseball Club and may not be rebroadcast in any form without the express written consent of the Toronto Blue Jays. Devon White, now one for 23 lifetime, takes strike one. performance tonight is he's doing it with almost a minimum pitches. Yeah, there's a couple of keys in watching Nolan Ryan over the years. Does he get his fastball in spots? He's done that tonight. Does he get the curveball over consistently? He's done that tonight. So you'd have to say early on, and it's very easy to look at the numbers with five strikeouts. He is on his game. Driven to left field out of play. You never know, you're looking at a man 44 years of age who threw 131 pitches in his last start. He looks as fresh as can be. Well, all those exercises, the riding of the stationary bicycle, the weights, the throwing in between starts, that's why he's ready. In that last start, covering eight and a third, he gave up eight hits and five runs. Approaching that here, that's his sixth strikeout. He's retired seven straight, freezing past Blue Jay hitters. From deep in the heart of Texas, the bats, Blue Jays baseball. Bottom of the third inning and the top of the Texas order. Here's Gary Pettis showing bunt taking strike. It's something they would like to see more of. Something the, the Angels, the Tigers, other teams that Gary Pettis played for wanted to see more of. More bunny. Now it is strike two. And less of that. Much less. That is dogged him throughout his career. Well, the only other Major League player that had as many hundred strikeout years and fewer than five or six home runs. Have the name Omar Moreno. Remember him with the Pittsburgh Pirates? Redirected by Key, and it's one of these plays you talked about it the other day at the Sky Dog, Tommy, that the pitcher, he knew it right away, wishes he had never touched. And you certainly can't take anything away from a pitcher because it's your natural reaction to field your position to try to go after the ball. Jimmy does that, but unfortunately, and you can see his reaction. Sure. It, as soon as it went off his glove, he knew that if he had let it go, Manuel Lee would have made the play. It's an infield single for Pettis. The batter is Jack Doherty, the left fielder. Doherty grounding out to Kelly Gruber in the first inning. A switch hitter with much more power from the left side pushes a butt foul. He 
He's got his dudes on hand here in Arlington. I could surf be up in Arlington. <laughs> <laughs> Tough finding a pond here. I don't know if something was surf on it. Expect to see that in, in Anaheim, maybe. We are out on the bald prairie. Totally awesome. <laughs> foul again. It's 0-2. Well, on Saturday, they will be at the post. CTV's Wide World of Sports will feature exclusive coverage of horse racing's first race in the Triple Crowd. It's number one jewel, the Kentucky Derby, live from Churchill Downs in Louisville. Big field. Hansel. One to watch. And a horse with no tail. Sea Cadet may be there as well. Great name for a song, A Horse with No Tail. I guess you can't depend on any kind of a tailwind then. <laughs> he has less to carry along across the line. You can see what Bobby Valentine's trying to do here early in the game. He had Doherty up there, and, and not too often do you see a number two hitter try to punt with two strikes, because if you foul it off, this is what happens. You're a strikeout victim, and you're out. But knowing the way Nolan Ryan's pitching, seeing him go through the first three innings, he realizes that one run might be enough, and that's what he wants to get. Well, let me ask you this. Why would he have a guy do it on the third strike who done it so badly on the first two? He probably thinks he's a better punter than he showed. Didn't show it there. Here's Palmero. And he's also hitting just a little over 100. Raphael fly to deep center. On the warning track to Devon White. First time out. Let's see what Pettis may be up to over at first base. One of the other things that Gary Pettis brings to a baseball diamond is his ability to steal bases, too. So Jimmy Key's going to have to keep a close eye, especially after Darty failed to move him over to second. A little high. Ball one. The eyes of Tim Sheeta. Coaching at third base, Dave Oliver. Texas great Toby Harris over at first. Yeah. Throwing 10 straight strikes. That's the first ball that we've seen from Jimmy Key in a while. Distracted by the base runner to be sure. Now it's ball two. Well, what a wild game they had at County Stadium in Milwaukee. Six hours and five minutes in 19 innings. The Brewers 10, the Chicago White Sox 9. <laughs> That's after they tied it in a three-run 15th inning. Rod Black will have more on that later. Solid single from Palmero at the feet of Whit sends Pettis to second base with one out. The third hit on Jimmy Key. Already the strong arm of Mark Witt being respected in the American League. That's why Rafael Palmero hits left-handers so well and also why he hit 390 against the Jays last year. But Pettis, with outstanding speed, never hesitated, took a good turn around second, but he knew all along that he wasn't going to go first to third on that base hit. Yeah, we've seen some great arms over the years. Remember Sixto Lescano mm. and, of course, Jesse Barfield of the Jays, now the Yankees. Now Mark Whitten, as good as any. Here is Ruben Sierra. of the second inning. You know, a lot of these Texas players, Jeff Russell, the reliever, is one has done a lot. So look at Jimmy Key. Is Sierra, a lot for charity as well. He gives tickets to Hispanic youth groups every single Friday night. When the Rangers at home, he gives a lot of tickets away to youngsters. Third base, it's past Gruber, and the Rangers will get a run. Meyer 
another smack throw between Kelly's legs. Pettis scores one nothing Texas. But that is that he might have had him. I'm not so sure. Pettis got a pretty good jump. And you can see he's about ready to slide. Ooh. It would have been close, but what happened, Greg Myers never got a full grip on the ball. And he never really was able to get off the strong throw. And the ball skips past Kelly. Kelly was there to try to block it, but the ball took that skip to his right and went down the left field line. So it's a stolen base and an error to the catcher allowing the run to score. Second error of the night. Now Morrow to second on the play. Now Sierra to left field. Back and gone into the night sky of Texas. The Rangers lead 3 0. to wish that Sierra might take a siesta. He's been murder in his two-game series. A breaking ball. He just opened things up and shows the power that he has. The amazing thing about Sierra with his uh, two home runs in the ball game last night, seven times he's hit two home runs. That's a pretty good pitch. Look at Myers' mitt. He's going to go down and inside to make the catch, and it was right in the wheelhouse of Ruben Sierra. But of the seven times he's hit two home runs in a ball game, three of those times he's done it against the Toronto Blue Jays. That is just the second home run that he has given up this year. Sierra, the 50th pitch by Key and loads on a 1-1 count. Rangers lead 3-0 here, staking Ryan to the lead he had looked for. You know, that pitch was borderline being maybe a ball if he doesn't swing. Julio Franco. Strike one. Inside to him, one ball, one strike. The Rangers have won five of their last six games versus the Blue Jays here at Arlington. That streak may just continue with Ryan pitching as Gruber throws out Franco, two gone in the inning. He doubled and ignited a big rally in the second that just fell short. Rangers left the bases loaded there. Hey, this stadium holds a shade over 40,000. They're going to have close to that tonight. Just a gorgeous night to watch a ball game. These fans capitalizing on that. The fact that Ryan is on the mound. Key with a strike to Gonzalez. Only do they sell out usually when Ryan pitches, but the television ratings down here always jump a couple of points too. They get the highest ratings when Nolan Ryan pitches, and I would imagine that we've got a good chance of getting good ratings too. You know what? Oddly enough, uh, Texas not on local television tonight. Yeah. This game is not on their schedule, but they have no way of knowing that Ryan, that far in advance, would pitch. That it was a little high school park that has kept on growing as the Rangers grew. We've seen a change over the years. I'll tell you how I've seen this stadium change, Chevy. In, in 1966, as a member of the uh, Texas League All-Star team, we played the Houston Colt 45s uh, baseball team. That's what they were called early on. We played them right here in the stadium. River backs up the ball, plays him, and safe is Gonzalez. Jays have had their defensive jitters tonight. Well, we talked earlier, Fergie mentioned the fact that Kelly Gruber battling the flu and not feeling 100% will make him feel even worse. After you back up, as soon as you make that one step back, it always seems that ball stays down, doesn't do what, it, what you want it to do. 
You can't come up and make the play. We saw John Olerud with a couple of plays like that up in the Sky Dome. That's three errors for the Blue Jays. Two with a glove and one with the arm. Mike Stanley, the catcher, is the seventh hitter of the Texas third inning. That's low ball one. It all began with Pat a single. After Doherty struck out, Carl Merrill single. Stolen base, an error by Myers. Then the two-run homer by Sierra, and it's 3 nothing Rangers. tough when a pitcher like Jimmy Key has to make four, maybe five outs in an inning to get out of here. Tough on any pitcher. Anytime you go out there and you make some pitches and you you think you should be out of the inning and then you look up and see the three under the E and zeros under the R and H. The nastiest letter in the alphabet for baseball, the E. Great grab by Manuel Lee. Somehow he retained it and his balance to flip to Alomar. And they get out of the inning, but not before. The Rangers wide the range for three. Watch this again. This was more than great. This was outstanding. Manuel Lee fully extended. Somehow the ball stays in the mid. An easy flip for the force. Watching the Bats Blue Jays baseball. Half a dozen strikeouts on the wall tonight for Ryan. That, by the way, sends him ahead of Dwight Gooden as the Major League strikeout leader in the season of 1991, this remarkable 44-year-old. Pitching coach Tom House, Nolan Ryan, this is his third year in the Texas Rangers. Since you first had him, has he lost anything off his fastball? You know, surprisingly, um, he's right where he belongs, and if anything, this is the fastest fastball he's had in April since he's been with us. Not good news for this league. Pitching to Roberto Alomar with a 1 0 count. He gets the strike call there 1 and 1. Every ball player remembers their first major league hit, but Alomar doubly so because it came off Nolan Ryan. A little high, that's ball two. That when Roberto was with the Padres and Nolan Ryan. With the Houston Astros. In fact, he's two for six lifetime against Nolan. Yeah, you, know, you talked, Chevy, about the trade way back when, when Nolan was with the Mets and the Mets acquired Jim Fergosi. But you also have to remember that Nolan's record was 29 and 38 in his four plus seasons with the Mets. He was a young, hard throwing right hander that was extremely wild. So you're talking about a pitcher who was nine games under 500 at that time, and the, the Mets desperately needed a third baseman, and so they acquired Fergosi. It's easy to look back on that yeah. and say, what a crazy trade. How would they know he'd be a late bloomer? Seven strikeouts now. Well, here are some of the father and son victims of Nolan Ryan. <laughs> Roberto Sandy and Dad. <laughs> We've got everybody in the Alomar family. The Franconas, the Bonds, the Griffies, the Schofields, and the Wills. Wow. He has struck out a ton of Hall of Famers, too. Roberto was telling me that he, he and his brother Sandy used to play with Barry Bonds in this ballpark when uh, Roberto's father played for Texas for four seasons. Heat, Wilbur swings through that on two. Well, you know the kind of career you've had when you go to your, your dad and ask him how to hit a certain guy. <laughs> yeah. How'd you hit Nolan? <laughs> no better than you, my son. <laughs> One ball and two strikes. So far with Kelly Gruber, Nolan with two fastballs up that Kelly missed, and then he came back with the curveball. Number one victim, Claudel Washington. Hope Nolan sends him a Christmas card. Hey, look at that. Number one, one time. Now, All here's right. a tough guy at the bottom. <laughs> Only once did he get Tommy Hunt. And hangs up for the left fielder, Jack Doherty. Two down in the fourth inning. 
Do you remember that one? You know, it's funny. Uh, I was talking about that earlier because having faced Nolan a few times, a uh, couple of games uh, as a member of the Blue Jays and a few times with the Expos when Nolan was with Houston. Uh, the one strike out, believe it or not, I don't remember, but I do remember two doubles. <laughs> remember the <laughs> positive things. That's, yeah, that's right. I only think positive. But uh, just uh, a battle all the way. Joe Carter pops one up. Stanley back as far as he can go, and it's out of play. I was telling you earlier that the, the one double, and the thing that stands out in my mind, it was in Anaheim was a member of the Jays. The next hitter was a pinch hitter, Sam Ewing. I think a lot of Jays fans were yep. a left-handed bat coming off the bench. And Ewing went up there and standing at second base watching Nolan Ryan pitch against Ewing. There was no way Sam Ewing was going to get Ruth wouldn't have gotten a hit off Nolan the way he pitched him. It was like he said to himself, how could I let this guy hit a double off me? There's no way this next guy is going to get me. It's a ball of two strikes to him. Since the walk to Gruber, which led to nothing, he has retired nine straight. He has struck out seven. Came off Carter and is a foul ball. That's a call that the home play at umpire needs a little help. And at that time, Tim Cheetah got help from Drew Coble at first base. Cheetah may have called it right off himself. But see, no call right away from Cheetah. The first base umpire, Drew Coble, is the one that said the ball did catch. And it did, indeed, seeing the replay, catch the front foot of Joe Carter. Ten in a row retired. Ryan in no hit range once again here in Texas tonight. Has slammed the door on the Blue Jays with three nothing lead on the Bats Blue Jays baseball. The Bats Blue Jays baseball on CTV. Brought to you by your local bottle of Coca-Cola Classic. You can't beat the real thing. The Texas Rangers hitting in the home half of the fourth inning here at Arlington tonight. The third baseman, Steve Bouchelle, at the plate. He flies to left in the second and takes strike one from Jimmy Key. Jeff Houston and Gary Pettis will be following Bouchelle in this inning. I think what's going through Jimmy Key's mind right now, he just finished an inning in which he allowed the two-run homer. He saw his ball club make a couple of errors behind him in that inning. He's been watching Nolan Ryan, and you almost have to think, Jimmy, thinking, is this club going to score off Nolan? So he's got to really bear down and come back after the way things happened in the third inning. That is strike uh, two, one ball and two strikes. You're saying between innings, how word can spread so fast around Major League Baseball. Already press boxes and oh, clubhouses yeah. are buzzing about what Ryan is doing here in Texas tonight. Solid single pass Lee. Carter to beat it. And limit Michelle to a single. They set And they don't boo Steve Bouchel here in Arlington. That's just their call for him. Boo. And he goes down. And nice play by Joe Carter to quickly get over into the gap. And if Joe Carter can't throw, if he doesn't have a strong arm right here, Bouchel takes a bigger turn and might think about going to second base. See how deep Carter is? But he's able to come up with a strong throw and hold Bouchel to the single. The shortstop, Jeff Houston, shows butt, lays down a dandy. Key finally dug the ball out and throws him out. Michelle advances to second on the sacrifice. Houston, a former expo, we talked about him being in the lineup, even though he's a left-handed hitter. Mario Diaz, another infielder with Texas, he's a little bit under the weather. He's got some bad flu himself, or he may have been in there. Jimmy's a good fielding pitcher, but here he had a little bit of trouble getting the ball out. 
scoops it up. Ball may have gotten a little deeper in his glove than he thought. Still he, plenty of time to get it. That's him. right. He maintains his composure and makes a play. Houston last year as a rookie was able to put together some pretty good stats. Yeah, not until last year really known for his bat. Pettis, same story. Not known for his bat, but he made a contribution in the third inning. A single that went off the glove of uh, Jimmy Key got the inning rolling for Texas to score three. Right. Yeah, talking about how word gets around, you and I were in the clubhouse, the Jays clubhouse, when they were all watching the TV when Ricky Henderson picked up the uh, record-breaking steal, 939 to break Blue Brock's record. All around baseball right now, press boxes, dugouts are hearing the word that Nolan Ryan, after four, has the no-hitter but also has eight strikeouts after four innings. What happens if you're in a newsroom of a newspaper or TV or radio station, the wire will start building it every half inning. Keeping track. Seeing Gary Pettis up there and mentioning Ricky Henderson, Pettis with over 300 lifetime steals. Had a nice conversation with Davey Lopes. Davey Lopes, one of Bobby Valentine's coaches, 557 stolen bases in his five career. And uh, we talked a lot about stolen bases, the head first slide as opposed to the straight on slide. There's Pettis, the third strikeout for Jimmy Key. Davy Lopes in his career was uh, more of a, an advocate of that straight on slide. This again is a problem that Pettis has had over his entire career. Uh, you expect the Incavillias and the Rob Deers and uh, let me just name the rest of the Tiger office. <laughs> you expect them to strike out, but not hitters such as a Gary Pettis, but he always has. This is Jack Doherty. He's over two. Well, you can kid about the Tigers and the strikeouts, but really, there's some other teams approaching Detroit in strikeout totals. Baltimore is one of them. Baltimore and Oakland, right there with them. That's the surprising thing about the Oakland A's. Seven strikeouts as a team, back at what the Tigers have done. Well, Dory down to 105 now with the 0 for 2 performance tonight. He grounded out and struck out. The Blue Jays with White and Alomar. Valentine responds with Pettis and Doherty. Two switch hitters off the top. Breaking ball is there for a strike. See that last pitch? If you recall the pitch that Ruben Sierra hit for the home run. Now that was a good pitch. That curveball to Doherty was almost the same place that uh, Jimmy Key made that pitch that Sierra hit out for the two-run shot. Here's a 2-1. Gas got a piece of that. Two balls and two strikes now with two gone and Steve Bushell going old at second base. A little bit of uh, good news, I guess, for the Orioles. And speaking of them, with Glenn Davis and his nerve problem in the upper deck area. Yes, he'll have to be out for about a month, but at least no surgery. And at least he will not miss uh, the rest of the season of three point, what, one million dollars? Dirty pops that up on the right side. It is drifting back toward the seats and will just be out of play. into DFW and then helicopters up there and signs being flashed overhead Arlington Stadium. Are you sure that's a helicopter? <laughs> Maybe something from some other planet. At least from Fort Worth. 
Lansing, Texas. <laughs> Here's the 2-2, and he fouls that back. There's always kind of a battle between the two cities. The stadium, as you mentioned, in between Dallas and Fort Worth. And uh, they plan in 1994 to have a, a new stadium just about a mile away. But the original thought was to have it either in Dallas or Fort Worth. And there's so much problem between the two cities, they decided to keep it in Arlington. <laughs> they have such a rivalry here in Texas that many consider Oklahoma to be another planet. <laughs> Down to Gruber. He'll make the tag on Bouchel and take care of the inning that way. Bouchel a little bit shocked that the play was coming his way. So Doherty, on the fielder's choice, ends the inning on the tag of Gruber of Bouchel. Good choice by Kelly Gruber. 3 0 on the bats, Blue Jays baseball for Texas. Happy couple. Mm -hmm. Seem to be. Come on, step out here. Don't get a hit here. At least wait till we're back. And working quickly to first baseman John Olerud as the ball on the strike to the uh, young Blue Jay. As the Blue Jays hit in the fifth inning. Totally frustrated so far by Ryan, Mark Whitten, and Glenn Allen Hill. Scheduled after Olerud. That missed two and one. That was that fastball that Nolan Ryan will throw more often to left-handers than to right-handers. Just get it to sink, more of a sinking fastball than the rising fastball that he throws so often. Just a piece of it, two and two. He sinks one away, then he comes in with the next one, tries to get it up in under the hands. I mentioned 19 Hall of Famers and strikeout victims of Ryan, some great names on the list. He spares no one, it seems. Some of the names, I mean, Eddie Matthews. <laughs> Goes back a while. Yeah, 25th season. That sales. Well, that just took off. too. Yeah. Third time he has run the count full. He has not done so since the first inning. From Alvin, Texas. kind of a pitcher his son is. I know he had a, a game he pitched against him at the University of Texas preseason. Yeah, he's just a freshman, and he hasn't pitched a lot. Uh, right now, his son, they say, throws in the low 80s. Uh, may get a little bit better, but isn't an overpowering type pitcher right now. He beat his son in that game 12-5, working five innings. Solra did well with a contact. Houston, the shortstop, back to gather it in. 11 in a row set down by Ryan. Now again, Gruber's walk. Third man to face the first inning. The only blemish on his record. Well, Nolan Ryan here in Texas can do no wrong. As a matter of fact, the Texas Senate voted a portion of State Highway 288 which runs through Alvin, Texas, to be called the Nolan Ryan Expressway. And one of the senators, Senator Brown, even said after that vote passed, and they named that Nolan Ryan Expressway, said, jokingly, of course, he said, this is the only expressway where you can drive 94 miles an hour. <laughs> you know, you saw that list of old timers that Nolan had struck out. I went around to all the Blue Jay coaches and asked them, well, if they had faced Nolan Ryan and what happened, Rich Hacker, the third base coach, said he only faced him once and he struck him out. Mike Squires said he was 5 for 11 with a couple of strike out, uh, strikeouts off Nolan. John Sullivan said that Ryan would have had to come to the minor leagues to strike him out. <laughs> Gene Tennis, well, he said the only home run he ever hit off Nolan was a three-run shot out in Oakland. 
And Cito said he's never hit a home run. You know, Cito had a big year. Uh, one year he had 29 home runs for San Diego. Yeah, they all have iron stories to tell. But an at bat against Nolan Ryan is one you always remember. He's 3 0 to Mark Whitten. Strike one. It's been a long time for Nolan Ryan between no hitters. June 11th of last year was number six. <laughs> Working on one tonight. Into center field. Playable for Gary Pettis. Two out of the inning. Yeah, he's the only pitcher, obviously, with all the no hitters. The only one who's thrown no hitters in three different decades, too. 70s, 80s, and 90s. Why do you hate to jinx them? I think that's nonsense. Frankly, the charm of CTV may strike again tonight. We were lucky enough last year to televise two no-hit games. Dave Stewart in the Sky Dome and Dave Steed in Cleveland. Now this tonight into the fifth inning with two gone. Nolan Ryan has not given up a hit. And Glenn Allen Hill in just a second at bat against Ryan. Strike one. Did that the first time. Struck out. He has fanned eight on the night. On Saturday, in your area, Toronto and Kansas City, check for it the starting time. It's a regional telecast for many of these stations. Boy, the high heat and Hill just can't handle it. Yeah, that's the same thing he did to Glenn Allen last time up. He sees that the young hitter is going after the high fastball, the one that's out of the strike zone, so he's just going to keep, keep feeding it there or maybe come back with the curve that's out of the strike zone. Upstairs. All the same. Inning is over. Hill goes back to talk to the umpire about what I know not. Nine strikeouts for Nolan Ryan. As long as you swing, the umpire's going to call it. <laughs> You're watching the Bats Blue Jays baseball. Forty thousand here in Texas rewarded so far with a bid for a seventh no hitter by Nolan Ryan. He's got the lead three nothing, and this trio will try to add to it right here, starting with Rafael Palmero, the first baseman. He launches that to right, but Whitten has room. All held up in the night air, and that's the first out of the fifth inning. Let's pause now for this word. Help strike out Iliadis and colitis. These bowel diseases afflict over 200,000 Canadians. Your donation will provide research funds to help find a cure for colitis and Crohn's disease. Call today and help strike out Iliadis and colitis. 1-800-387-1479. Next up, Ruben Sierra. One man wrecking crew for the Blue Jays. Three home runs and two nights here in Texas. His blast from the third gave them a 3-0 lead. You have to like the way Jimmy Key came back in the fourth inning. Even though he allowed that base hit to Bouchelle leading things off after the disastrous third, he came back and was able to shut down the Rangers. You saw the numbers on Sierra against Jimmy Key a moment ago. It doesn't hit well for average, but does the power. Two balls and one strike. Red Sox are scoreless with Minnesota. Bob Black's going to tell you all about that and the rest of the action in baseball today a little later. Again, the straight by Sierra, 3-1. I okay, one of the things that sometimes goes unnoticed concerning Ruben Sierra, over the last four seasons, the fewest amount of games he's played is 156. He goes out there even when he has some minor injuries. He had a few of those problems last year, a few little minor nagging injuries. Key gets this. Smartly approaches the bag. Two gone. And Key, a very good fielding pitcher. MJ fans know on the Dave Steve. Yeah, that was a nice play because had the ball gotten by Jimmy Key, John Olrood was well off the bag. There was nobody at first. But once Jimmy made that play, he just touches the bag easily. Took it all the way. Julio Franco and, and uh, Blue Jays Manuel Lee have something in common. Apart from both being from the Dominican Republic, of course. They're both natural shortstops. He became second baseman. Lee's back at short now with Tony Fernandez gone, but Franco's been over at second base. Not his normal position for three seasons. 
about these three young players that came up in the Philadelphia Phillies organization? Julio Franco, Juan Samuel, who's now with the Dodgers, and Ryan Sandberg, who's with the Chicago Cubs. It's fading toward the seats. Oh, it can't get to it. Two strikes. That's some pretty good young players right there. A lot of talent. <laughs> None of them with the Phillies right now. <laughs> Well, the Phillies are where they are. Yeah, Julio Franco, too, with the All-Star game coming up in July at the Sky Dome. Julio Franco was the All-Star MVP last year. Had a big double off uh, Rob Dibble. Drove home a couple of runs for the American League. He had a notion. He holds back, takes the ball, one, two. striking out to end the fifth inning for Texas. They continue to lead by a score of 3 0. And let's see what's happening elsewhere in the world of sports. We'll check in at CTV Sports Control with Rod Black. Well, I wonder what this guy's like first thing in the morning. <laughs> or these. <laughs> the nine keys displayed here by some of Ryan's fans as he works to Greg Myers, the Blue Jay catcher, and starts him with a strike. That was your old fraternity, wasn't it? <laughs> Very old. <laughs> you can do that when the night air is 77 Fahrenheit. up in that territory with two strikes uh, you're right it's one of the toughest pitches to stay away from and with 10 strikeouts now Nolan Ryan in his career 208 times has struck out 10 or more Fading fast, an outfielder with lesser speed might not have gotten there. Yeah, remember Bobby Valentine's decision to not have Brian Downing in as the DH. If Downing's the DH, Juan Gonzalez is in center field with a sore hamstring and not Gary Pettis. Pettis, five times his one gold gloves, came a long way to make that catch. Ryan owes him one. Two gone here in the sixth inning. And the drama continues to the at bat of Devon White, who struck out twice. No, it's just looking back. One of the no-hitters that Nolan Ryan pitched as a member of the Astros, his catcher, his former Blue Jay, Alan Ashby. Strike one to Devon White. One for 24 lifetime against Ryan. One in the first inning. That was white. All three in the second. Two 
two in the third, two in the fourth, one in the fifth, one so far here in the sixth inning, ten of them mowed down by Ryan. Filed away, one and two. Roger Clemens against Seattle holds the record of 20 strikeouts in a single game. You know, we were talking earlier about things that you see in, in, in clubhouses. There's a sign in the visiting clubhouse here in Arlington where the Jays have their lockers. And it's a sign saying any players requesting Nolan Ryan's autograph, limit your request to two and do it the second day of the series. And get in line. <laughs> two and two. So you know he's obviously going to oblige, but he wants to just make it one day, and, and he wants to limit things to two per player. Talking to himself out there, just to get everything set for this offering to White. Just missed, ball three, three and two again. You know, last year, Nolan Ryan held the opposition to a 188 batting average. And ten times he's done that in his career. Held the other hitters to a batting average under 200. Hmm. tonight on CTV from Arlington, Texas. 3-0 Rangers on the bats for Jays baseball. Don Chevrier along with Tommy Hutton and Fergie Oliver welcome you back to Nolan Ryan night here in Arlington, Texas. He and the Rangers lead the Blue Jays 3-0 on no hitter through six for Ryan. For Texas, Juan Gonzalez, the DH, starts the Rangers sixth inning. Gonzalez reaching on an air after a double of the second inning. Puts that into right field. Whip will come on a couple of steps and take the first out. And bring up the catcher, Mike Stanley. You also have to think about a little bit what's going through Mike Stanley's mind yeah. back there behind the plate, realizing that through six innings, future Hall of Famer has a, another no-hitter going. And Stanley has not caught one of Nolan Ryan's no-hitters. Jimmy Key has given up five hits. He's been victimized by three errors. He's totally the forgotten pitcher tonight. donation is being made to the Schizophrenia Society of Canada on behalf of the Labatt's Blue Player of the Game for Texas and Sanyo. Sanyo's CompuLogic CD portable stereo, compact power and realism of a full-size home CD stereo, motor-driven twin cassettes remote control, Sanyo's sophisticated CompuLogic CD. Mr. Ryan has been very CompuLogic tonight. Two gone in the sixth inning for Steve Bouchelle. One for two, and a base hit in the fourth inning. We sat in, I guess it's three years ago now, at uh, Exhibition Stadium, a Nolan Ryan no-hit bid, but Nelson Luriano ruined in the ninth inning that Sunday afternoon. 
That's the amazing thing. Aside from the six no hitters, he's pitched 12 one hitters. <laughs> 12 one hitters and and three of those, two others, aside from the Nelson Liriano base hit, three of those ruined in the ninth inning. And three of them with first inning singles. Mm. Two strikes to Bouchelle. Pretty key is to the forgotten man to settle down the pitch quite decently from the fourth inning on. The third inning was his big problem when they got all the runs. With Nolan Ryan, he relaxed and ever so ready. I need to go into work right now as Bouchelle takes a cold third strike. Jimmy Key struck out five tonight. Again, all lost in the Nolan Ryan performance here in Texas. Six innings complete, three nothing on the bats. Blue Jays baseball. Welcome back to Arlington, Texas, for Ryan works to Alomar to start the seventh inning. A little high for ball one. Three nothing. Rangers lead, looking to sweep the miniseries from the Jays. Kelly Gruber, the only base runner on a walk from Ryan in the first inning, is on deck next. Aaron a big cut. Almost screwed himself into the ground at home plate. Alomar trying to hit one off the clock in deep right field with that swing. Ball does intimidate you. You know your bat speed's got to be so quick you do some things you'd never do at the plate. They do a lot of this. Swing through pitches. You know, and spotting the fastball. That, that wasn't just a fastball that he reared back and threw down the middle. That fastball was on the outside part. You can see the swing that Roberto had. He moves the man out upstairs. Probably upstairs here. Nope. Down and gets him to strike out number 12. The Toronto seventh inning. He is eight outs away from a no-hit game. Baseman Kelly Gruber. Different types. Three fastballs right there. The one that Roberto had the big swing on. The one that he spotted on the outside. And that third one, the sinking fastball that went down. Now Gruber. Gives him a breaking ball for a strike. They don't know what's coming next. If they do guess it's a fastball, as you say, they have no idea about its location. And certainly, you're not going to go up against Nolan Ryan and look for that curveball. He pops it straight out. Back to the screen comes Stanley. Without the ball. Two strikes to Gruber. Well, Ryan has done this kind of thing to a lot of teams, including the Blue Jays before. He struck out 14 Jays July 25th of 89. He has 23 games of 15 strikeouts or more. We mentioned Clemens with uh, 20 strikeouts for the record. Ryan has 19 strikeouts four times, including against the Jays in their first year of 1977. So here he goes to Gruber on two. Stanley sets up out there, and that's where it is. Number 13 is the recorded. We are watching an absolute pitching masterpiece here tonight. This is just incredible. And the thing that you lose sight of in watching him pitch, is that fastball runs away from Kelly Gruber. You've seen three different types of fastballs here in this inning. But the thing that you lose perspective in is that he's 44 years old. He works into the seventh inning, having struck out five of the last six he has faced. 13 in total. Here's Joe Carter. That strike one to him. And look where it was. Right on the outside corner. Well, here they are. 1990 Oakland, the last. And the Dodgers before that, nine years earlier. Baltimore, Minnesota, the point of Kansas City. Closing in on another one here in Texas tonight. Yeah, pretty good run there in the mid-70s, huh? Took some time off in the 80s, but he's back in the 90s. One ball and one strike. Going, he back? Going through some of those catchers, Jeff Torbor, when they were with the Angels, caught one of the no-hitters, Art Kushner, Tom Egan, Alan Ashby, I mentioned. John Russell caught the last no-hitter that Nolan Ryan pitched. 
can do is sit there and talk about it. Look at Kelly saying that ball moved. Very, I mean, you can't be upset. You just have to say this is this guy is a legend. He's a Hall of Famer. He's done it before. And you just have to marvel and try to go up there and try to break it. The ball's in the strike. Yes, they can certainly commiserate. Making ball, Carter lays off. He goes to three and one now. He's retired 18 straight since the Gruber walk. Three and two. You made the point, and the pictures speak for themselves. I mean, he is just varying his pitches. So, I mean, his selection, his quarterback he got there is a thing to behold. There's no way of knowing where this next pitch will be. Does get the bat on it. And I guarantee that ball was well into the 90s. He, he reached back. Had a 3-2 pitch. He wanted to go with his fastball. He knew he had to throw it just a little bit harder. But Joe Carter's also been sitting on the bench and faced him twice before and seen that curveball. He's had such good command of the curveball. I wouldn't be surprised if he even threw a 3-2. Well, he puts his second man on. Carter reaches for the first time since Gruber's walk in the first inning. First baseman John Olerud. And it brings up Olerud. And here was a man, Ryan, who after throwing 131 pitches against Cleveland last Friday, they weren't quite sure he'd be ready to start. Look what he's done tonight. Shell, his third baseman, drops in for a chat. You can tell he hated to give that pass to Carter. Yeah, and also think about it. It's been a while since that first inning walk to Kelly Gruber. And Nolan Ryan's had to pitch from the stretch. Might change things. Base runner is going, and it's fouled out of play. Was headed for second. Not a bad idea right there. A lot of runners over the years, because of Nolan Ryan's high leg kick, have stolen bases. And number two, it opened up a nice hole on the left side with the shortstop, Jeff Houston, covering second base. It opened up a nice hole for John Olden. The second the more respectable out, and he'll do it again here. This time the third base can be shell in foul territory will collect the out. Seventh inning over, Ryan six outs away from a no-hitter. Stay with us for history in the making on Labatt's Blue Jays baseball. Key is gone this night in Arlington, and Bob McDonald comes on now. He figured to get some more seasoning in Syracuse, but the absence of Ken Daly due to his busy problems and the recurring inactivity for him brought McDonald along to pitch very decently in his limited activity with the Blue Jays. A couple of games, he won't strike out, and hasn't given up a hit or a walk. He comes in to start with the number nine Texas hitter, Jeff Houston, the shortstop. So Key leaves without consecutive victory number five. If things stay the way they do, and he will at least get a no decision tonight. It's the best he can hope for. Left after throwing 95 pitches. Here's the butt for a strike. Yeah, certainly a, a good outing by Jimmy Key. The pitch that Sierra hit the home run, we've described that, a, a good pitch. Not a hanging pitch at all, it was down. Errors hurt him in that third inning. No, we've talked about, Chevy, though, we've talked about the chain of events and things that happened with the pitching staff because of the injury to Tom Hankey and also the dizziness of Ken Daly not being able to pitch it. So all of a sudden that's put 
Wayne Ward in a different position. Jim Nacker, Frank Wills. Bob McDonald has been called up, and the Blue Jays signed to a Triple A contract today. Signed Guillermo Hernandez, veteran left-hander who had that Cy Young year with the Detroit Tigers. Bit of a surprise move. He was released by Philadelphia in the spring. Uh, he was in Puerto Rico pitching, and the Jays I guess need a good left-handed arm in their farm system, and so they brought him in and signed him. Yeah, you, minor league deal. Yeah, and you think about that if the injuries didn't occur up here, McDonald would probably still be. Triple A, and so the signing of Hernandez might not be necessary. Two and two is the captain Houston. And twice has grounded out the first, the second is sacrificed to move the across. Houston frustrated becomes strikeout victim number one. McDonald. I want to remind you, Sunday night on CTV, get ready for a common identity crisis. Pat Midler and Lily Tomlin bump into Pat Midler and Lily Tomlin on a crazy story about two sets of twins in big business this week. CTV Sunday movie. Texas Rangers doing big business here tonight. What appears to be a capacity crowd sitting in on a possible seventh career no-hitter for Nolan Ryan. Hope you're enjoying it. Wherever you might be looking in tonight. Pitch from McDonald is low to Gary Pettis. His hit came in the third inning. He stole a base and scored on an errant throw from catcher Greg Myers. That was the first run of the night. Motions to butt, but takes the strike one and one. The other two runs came after Palmero singled Ruben Sierra's two-run homer. Made it three-nothing. Two strikes. It's really been fun watching Mike Timlin and Bob McDonald, a couple of young pitchers. Timlin with the hard, sinking fastball from the right side. McDonald uh, similar from the left side. And even though they have been called up, and we've talked about role changes with the relief pitchers, it's a great experience for these young pitchers to come up and, and get this experience in these types of situations. Two strikes. McDonald working to Pettis in the Texas seventh inning. These situations right here for young pitchers down the line toward the end of the season are invaluable. What they can learn by getting in games and, and doing the job that they've done. By the way, the Red Sox still score us in Minnesota. That game in the late going now. They're in the ninth inning. He strikes him out. Bases two, fans two. McDonald doing his Nolan Ryan impersonation. Fielder, Jack, Jack Doherty, the left fielder up next. He's 0 for 3. You figure what it is for a, a youngster, Bob McDonald, to go out there having sat in the bullpen, watch Nolan Ryan. Now he's out there on the same mound. And acquitting himself very well. Single past Alomar keeps the Texas seventh alive. We'll bring up Rafael Palmero. Rangers, by the way, have a Canadian on their team. First baseman Kevin, Kevin Reimer not on the lineup tonight, but he still resides in Enderby, British Columbia. Doherty, a switch hitter, and that, that's the way he hits. He's not a power hitter. He has struggled. We've talked about his average right around the 100 mark, but when he hits that type of baseball, it's hard on the ground. Keeps it low, line drive down. That's when he's successful. Palmero, with his single in the third inning, is one for three. Strike one, inside part of the play. Good pitch by McDonald. You know, we were talking about the swing of Rafael Palmero, and it's a nice swing to watch. And he said, as a youngster, playing baseball early league and up through high school in the Miami area he said he just played all the time he played four or five games a week even when he was playing in high school he played in other leagues ripped in the left center field so McDonald starts impressively enough with strikeouts of Houston and Pettis Doherty and now Palmero back-to-back -back singles for Ruben Sierra 
Well, that's the worst part of it. The back-to-back -back singles, there's that swing. He takes that pitch the other way. A lot of left-handers against the left-hander will pull that ball, and, and when you try to pull that pitch, it's just the ground ball to the right side as Willie Frazier starts to loosen up. But the problem with get the two strikeouts with the two base hits, and here comes that guy again, Ruben Sierra. That guy is at a two-run homer tonight, and a couple of homers last night. Single-handedly has beaten the Blue Jays in this two-game stand in Texas. Sierra on the right side tonight against both Key and McDonald left-handers. He is uh, 50 points weaker there than he is the left side of the plate. You would not know it by what he has done. Two-run homer, third inning. Likes the pitch away for ball one. involved tonight. One ball, one strike. It's a longer inning than the, the last two or three. Now this might affect Ryan as he sits. And I think it might affect someone going after their first no-hitter, but when you've thrown six, he's gone through just about everything. Gruber up with it. Forced play at second to Alomar gets the job done. Good hard shot by Sierra, but to no avail. A couple of hits do no damage to the Jays or McDonald. He still trail Ryan and the Rangers by three. Nolan about ready to go to work on Labatt's Blue Jays baseball. Newfoundland looking in on a bid for no hit number seven for the amazing Texas right-hander Nolan Ryan tonight. Ryan gets set to pitch the eighth inning. Blue Jays with the inexperience of Mark Whitten and Glenn Allen Hill. And Greg Myers in behind him. Get down to the bottom part of the order if you look at the prospects. On paper, at least, they're pretty favorable for Ryan to continue this. Really about the only bat that uh, Cito might send up there would be the veteran bat of Mookie Wilson. Whitten races that in the right field, but Sierra is there. Twice, Mark Whitten has hit good shots to the outfield. He drove one to Pettis in center, a no-hit saver in the fifth inning, and now this to Sierra. Yeah, you think about some of the balls that have been hit tonight. That one ball in the sixth inning, Manuel Lee hit that Gary Pettis raced in on the shallow fly ball, but as you mentioned, Witten the last two times up has been right on the fastball of Nolan Ryan. Hill hasn't gotten around that at all night. He has struck out twice. Okay, your young hitter. Just getting ready to say before he threw that curveball, what did he throw Glenn Allen last time? Well, like three straight fastballs. Yeah, you'll remember that yeah. in the fifth inning, Tommy. And I had a chance to ask Glenn Allen, you know, what he said to the home plate umpire. And he just said, well, are those balls moving? And she just said, yes, they are. He said, would you check them for me, please? He says, I haven't had a chance to. <laughs> they're, they're moving right into the mitt of Mike Stanley. Oh, yeah. Amazing consistency. 1-1 one, one to Hill. Sometimes a hitter, after he swings at a pitch up, will ask, or pitch down that he thinks is out of the strike zone, will ask if it was a strike or not. This has popped up, but will be well back and out of play. One ball and two strikes. And then obviously the sarcastic umpire will say, well, sure it is, you swung at it. <laughs> what, what the hitter wants to know is if, if he swung at a strike or a ball. Doesn't much matter. A Baker's does it in the strikeout department tonight. Just the two walks to Gruber. And then the Carter six innings later. Just a piece. Even the foul balls are hard. This curveball, Glenn has a good swing in it. And because of that, I'd be surprised if Nolan comes back with a curveball again. George Foreman wow. makes impact like that. So after seeing that good swing on the curveball, 
Let's see if Nolan stays with his fastball up to Glenn Allen Hill. He does. Number 14. He's now four outs away from a no-hitter. And he stayed right in that same area with Glenn Allen Hill all night. And, and looking back, Chev, at his six no-hitters, he had 17 strikeouts in one of the no-hitters. Here's Greg Myers. Just gets a piece. He's done over the 100 pitch mark now with 101. It's 131 against the Indians last Friday night. this day Nolan Ryan might join him on May 1st of 1991 Willie Fraser on the mound for the Blue Jays Franco lifts that up into right field heading for foul territory is Whitten and does collect it there reaching in by the Ranger bullpen I'd say that's always a difficult play for a left fielder or a right fielder going into foul territory when you have to encounter the bullpen because you have that mound area down there and you, you tip your toe into foul territory and sometimes you stumble over that mound. Good play by Mark. It'll reach a little bit further at the end than he figured. There you go. See the mound right there in the bullpen warm-up area for Texas. Bullpen had a scatter. Juan Gonzalez, he takes a strike from the rejuvenated Fraser and had an absolutely horrible spring training in Dunedin. Went to Syracuse, got his mechanics and rhythm together, and has come back to pitch effectively. One ball, one strike. As you look ahead to the menu for Mr. Ryan, feasting to the ninth inning of his no-hit dinner tonight. Manuel Lee, Devon White, and Roberto Alomar scheduled. Blue Jays' banner will certainly be touching on this at length and other activities involving the American League and the Blue Jays next weekend. Check for where you live. Gonzalez hit him. We'll go to first base. He'd make a great move to get away from that pitch. He does become a hit batsman. Frazier just trying to keep his fastball in, up and in. That's where you want to pitch Juan Gonzalez. He held his ground. Mike Stanley now, the catcher. And this could be a very special night in his career. He does wind up catching the seventh no-hitter for Nolan Ryan. Lead. Breaking ball 
stays up. Two and one now is the count. As Fergie mentioned earlier, seems like every pitch Nolan Ryan throws, a, a new record is set. He's also working on his 60th career shutout. Reaches for it, sends it back foul. The attendance tonight a little misleading. Uh, 33,439. 10,000 more than that here because the supermarket gave away, talk about great timing, <laughs> gave away 10,000 tickets for tonight's game. So 10,000 people may be seeing the game of a lifetime free of charge. They would have had a great night anyway. I'd be gladly pay for this. In the right field, Mark Britton talking back. Has to give up on it off the base of the wall. It was Gonzalez heading for third base. Play at second, safe there with a double to Stanley. Well played by Mark Witten. Watch this. Bare hand off the wall and turns and fires. And also give a little credit to Manuel Lee. A little bit of the pick on the one hop. It comes quickly with the tag. And Stanley just is able to beat it. That's a, a good try by Witten to get it in quick and then a nice play by Manuel Lee. Galen Sisko out to talk to Fraser with Steve Bichelle, the hitter. Lead him to face the right-handed hitter. Michelle one for three tonight. Yeah, you know, it's funny how things work. As Nolan Ryan just look how relaxed he is next to Tom House, his pitching coach. Who do you think he's pitching tonight? Tom House, his pitching coach, is four or five years younger. <laughs> <laughs> Rangers make a mistake there. They send the runner Gonzalez. He is a dead duck while Stanley takes third with two out now. Well, they tried to squeeze. They tried to just sneak in one more run. Bobby Valentine did. With the runner coming, uh, a, a pitch that's not a good pitch to try to bunt. So you can't really fault the hitter, Steve Bruchel, and you can't fault the runner. Just uh, Blue Jays were able to come out of that, making that pitch and getting the runner trying to come in. Here's Fraser, a breather on the way to his 0-1 delivery here, which misses one ball, one strike. That's a, a play out of the Bobby Valentine book of Tommy Lasorda. Bobby played for Tommy Lasorda in the minor leagues, coming up the Dodgers organization. And Dodgers like to do that every so often. He reaches for it. Gruber, generous hop. Makes the throw to Oru to take care of Bouchelle and the Rangers who strand Stanley, but that's not the story. This man is Ryan, three outs away from no hit number seven. Stay with us right here on CTV, Canada's no hit network. <laughs> the eyes of Texas but the eyes of North America are upon Nolan Ryan here in the ninth inning looking for a career seventh no hitter at the age of 44. First up shortstop Manuel Lee. Low ball one. Just two base runners. Carter in the seventh inning. Gruber in the first on walks. On wide. Roberto Alomar top of the order due next for Toronto. Two hit by Mark Whitten, one in the fifth inning, a fly ball to deep center, a line drive to right field in the eighth, and then that shallow fly ball by Manuel Lee in the sixth inning that Gary Pettis raced in and made a fine catch. Devon White has a hat trick tonight, three strikeouts. There have been three no-hitters in this date. Leading back 
to 1906. Ball one to White. 15 strikeouts for Ryan this night. White fouls that back one and one. Hitting with a one for 25 lifetime mark versus Ryan. says Tim Sheeta at the knees. Been that kind of a night for Devon White. Three strikeouts, came into the game one for 22 lifetime against Nolan. just a little bit longer. Two balls and two strikes. If you think about it, the last couple of innings, Looking back to that one curveball that Glenn Allen Hill back in the eighth inning had a good rip at. About that time, Nolan really hasn't had the control of the curveball that he did through the first six or seven innings. Even that one there had sharp break to it, but was out of the strike zone. Again, I think he's going to stay upstairs with his fastball. Just missed outside with a three and two. to a full count for the seventh time tonight. Franco again. Ryan's an out away. And now the only man standing between Nolan and Ryan the seventh career no-hitter is Toronto second baseman Roberto Alomar. And even though Roberto Alomar is a fine butter, you go up there and you say to yourself, if you're going to break up a no-hitter, you're going to do it swinging. You've got to. Like everybody else tonight, he's off for three, and that's strike one. This is electrifying, and I know after he struck out the side in the second inning, you and I turned and looked at each other and said, he is on his A game tonight. You had that feeling. Strike two. Perhaps the most remarkable man to pitch in this game. Nolan Ryan. Low. This entire stadium standing in anticipation of the final strike, of the final out. Staying with his fastball. It is what has gotten him this far, and he hopes it will drive him home. Two and two. Nolan looked.
looking at that ball saying, I don't want this, no more curve balls. Give me a good one, I'm gonna go with the heat. Nope, that won't do either. Let's settle for this one. Young hitter hangs in with him. You have that right. Give some credit to Roberto Alomar, who battles and battles and battles right here. He doesn't want to make the last out. Young man, got his first big league hit ever. Uh, Nolan Ryan. 